Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, DFR Summit. All right, uh, don't, why don't we have that? So this is a really cool topic. Uh, it's something that I thought about for a really long time and it kind of melded into this talk. Um, and I'm really pleased to be back at, at the DFR Summit uh, after a couple of year absence, giving a talk, even though I'm not there this year, I'm really sorry for that. Um, but uh, this is something that, that has kind of evolved over years of working with customers. So I'm really excited to, to present this today. A little about me, uh, Shelly Giesbrecht. Uh, I am a director of incident response at CrowdStrike. Um, and where I started in the industry was working on help desks, helping people do those basic day-to-day -day things. But that's really where I learned the skill of that client whisperer. Uh, and that is one of my favorite things about doing what we do is being able to help people get to somewhere where they need to be. Um, and we help people on some of the worst days of their business lives. We're going to talk about the worst nightmares today. Uh, and, and that's exactly why I love this. I'm a Lego maniac. And what that means to me from the perspective of incident response is when you think about Lego, you get a whole bunch of pieces and you get a manual and you figure out how to build this thing based on this manual incident response for me is somebody a threat actor came in and knocked our lego castle over uh our hogwarts lego castle they've put it into thousands of pieces and incident responders get invited in to help rebuild the castle without the manual sometimes we have some pieces left over uh, but we try to get them into a better place than they were before. Um, as you can see, I am a bow tie enthusiast. I wear them e everywhere I possibly can. And I'm a very dedicated dog mama, which I'm going to show you a picture right at the end. All right. This today, uh, as I said, comes from years of talking to customers uh, and figuring out um, why when we go in to do an investigation, there isn't always the things that we want there. Um, and when I say that, I mean that I go into customers and they say, we need you to help us find out this because our worst nightmare has happened. It has come true. And here are there are objectives for the investigation. And I say, okay, let me help you with that. Um, but for one or another reason, maybe I'm not able to. My worst nightmare, by the way, is that spider. That's why it's on the slide. Uh, and what I'm going to go through is not only what the worst nightmare is, but the way it usually goes. And then I'm going to tell you about the way I think it should go. Um, and that is starting at the bottom, if you will, uh, taken from a Drake song, but going from the worst nightmare, taking that and moving backwards. What do we need? If we know what this is our worst nightmare, if we know this is what our objectives are gonna be for an investigation, then what do we need and how do we work backwards to that so that the preparation step uh, that we're taking uh, gives us all of those things we're prepared so that when that worst nightmare happens, we, we know that we've got the right things in place. But that really depends on what kind of organization you are. And I'm gonna talk a, a lot about that. I'm gonna generalize a lot about that, but I'm gonna talk uh, what sort of organization you are, and then how do we do that? And how do we do that is finding allies in the bit in our business. And then I'm going to sort of recap everything. All right. So how it begins? Where do we start? It's Friday. It's 4 p.m. Probably. You've been fighting with something all week, but now it's crucial. It is your officially your worst nightmare. Now, when I say this, I want you to think for your organization. What is your organization's worst nightmare? It might be being ransomed and being hard down. It might be having data stolen because you're a data rich environment. It might be many other things. So think about for your organization, what is your worst nightmare? And I want you to think about that as I'm going through the presentation and kind of see where the alignment is for your organization and how you might fit this model uh, to your organization. So Maybe you've got data stolen. That might be your data rich environment. Maybe you've got PII. You don't know what was taken. You don't know when it was taken. All of those things are really important. Or maybe you're an organization that sends out product that uh, has to respond to customers on, on a very, very tight basis. And you're hard down because you've been fully encrypted and you don't know how to recover. So all those things, think about those things. And as in anything, all of these things are going to depend on many, many factors. All right. 
obligatory Canadian reference with the beaver, by the way. My first question, usually, when I approach a customer is, based on the things that you would like to know, do you have anything for me to look at? Do you have logs? Are you keeping logs? Do you have some PCAP? Rare, but nice. Do you have NetFlow? Less rare, still very nice. Do you have an EDR product in place? Also very nice, a little bit more common these days, thank goodness. Uh, but can I have some logs? Can I have something to look at? That is one of the things that is uh, probably the most important and yet lacking thing in an environment. When we go to, to do an investigation uh, and we ask questions about what might be in place, there's a lot of reasons why evidence might not exist in an environment. Um, maybe the ransomware overwrote, you know, uh, or the threat actor overwrote them. Uh, maybe they deleted or damaged uh, evidence or, or files. We see a lot of anti-forensics when we go in and do investigations, but maybe they just don't exist because you didn't know that you needed them. You didn't know that you needed to keep them as long as you did or otherwise. So that is the number one reason is it just doesn't exist. Sometimes we go with default logging, but the things that we need to prove what we need to meet our objectives don't exist in the default logging. So some other questions that I might ask your organization if I come to help you with an incident response. Probably the top and most important one is what is your objectives? I can tell you objectives that you might need. And I will tell you some of the most common are, of course, if data was stolen, is it being is it being for sale? How much was taken? You know, what do we have to be concerned about? And that's basically around data rich environments that are 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 heavy with customer data, PII, PHI, uh, et cetera. So do you have protected information? That's really important because you need to understand, is there any notifications that need to happen? What's your timing? We need to talk about different states, particularly California or perhaps in EMEA, where we have GDPR, we need to know what the timelines are so we know when we need to make our notifications. What other obligations might you have? Do you have obligations to business partners? For instance, do you need to ship product by a certain date? And if you don't, your entire business is over? We need to know that so we can help out with that. What about your most critical assets? Are they down? And how, what, in what order do they need to come up? Who are the owners of those? All of those things you need to know in advance. Um, and how long can you be down? Interestingly enough, it, again, it depends on the type of organization that you are. Some organizations, if they're hard down for an hour, it's a huge problem. Some organizations can be hard down for weeks because they have paper processes in place that they can, that they can go back to. It depends on your organization. So the answers, as I said, may and should vary. Uh, not all things are equal for all organizations. So it's gonna be based on obviously your industry. Um, healthcare, for instance, if we look at that, we've got a few different things going on there. Patient data, very, very critical, obviously, if it's stolen. But systems being hard down, also incredibly uh, important. Specific organization, maybe your organization does something differently than other people. Maybe there's uh, your business model is slightly uh, more advanced or or different from other folks. So you have to think about those things. And again, I want you to think about it in terms of your organization. What does your worst nightmare look like based on these things? Uh, I'm Canadian, so I'm going to talk about provincial laws, but your local, state, provincial, federal laws may differ. But you also have to understand where else you do business. For instance, uh, I work for CrowdStrike. We do business in multiple countries around the world. And when we think about uh, data protection, uh, and, uh, and, and, and just the nature of doing business. We have to understand the laws and our obligations to each of those countries. Uh, we're, and then you have contracts, partners, uh, customers, et cetera. How do you deal with those when you, have, when you have an incident? And then what do you need to deal with them? There's so many questions to ask. And let's face it, that's a scary thing. So this is the way that it normally goes. Normally we do something like, hmm, I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna go in on the internet, I'm gonna figure out what are the best practices? What's out there? What do I need to know about? Um, what's NIST telling me to do? What does the SANS org tell me to do? Uh, there's lots of models out there, right? For incident response. 
then we have to figure out how much money do we have? Well, we spent this on this, we spent this on this. And so we're gonna have to base, we've got these best practices and they say they cost about this much, but we've only got about this much money. Okay, so we've got about this much money and this best practices, this is the most important thing. So we're gonna collect this because this is what we can afford and this is the most important thing according to all of these standards. And how long do we need to keep it for? Well, I guess we're gonna keep it for as long as we can afford to, or we're gonna recommend it, right? So recommended might be a year or three months or whatever you have, but can you afford to keep all those logs? Maybe firewall logs are you know, prohibitively expensive for you to store and you could only store 24 hours. That's an extreme example, I think, but it happens, right? So we, so that's what we, we sort of normally see is, uh, well, best practice, budget, all about the money, what can we actually do? But does that answer the question of, if our worst nightmare came true, do we have what we need? Probably not. Now here's the other model that I frequently see. We've made absolutely no plan because that would mean thinking about what we're doing. We're just gonna collect whatever on our, what's ever coming up on our firewalls, whatever's on our servers, it's there. We're probably not even gonna collect it. It's just gonna roll whenever it does because we set it up as default. There's absolutely no log retention anywhere. We're not sending the logs to a syslog. We're not sending it to a sim. We're just you know letting it ride out. And we're hoping that an incident doesn't happen. Thoughts and prayers to you. I see this more often than I'd like to. And the problem with that is, is then I get asked, tell me all the things when there's an incident happened. And I say, I would love to, but mostly I just have thoughts and prayers for you. So this is what I'm suggesting. This is something that, again, I've been thinking about for years and it kind of came together in the last year in, in this format. I want you and your organization to sit down and say, for us, this is the worst case scenario that could happen to us. Is that losing data? Is that being hard down? Is that both? Who knows? And if that happens, what do we need to know? Do we need to know what data went out so we can make notifications and who we need to notify? Do we need to know what our critical asset list is and how, and how they need to come up and in what order so that we can get back to production? All of those things, I want you to think about it in advance. What are the objectives that you would need out of an investigation? And then from there, you're gonna figure out from the objectives, then what do I need? What evidence, what logs, what sources of information will I need to help me answer those objectives? And the last thing is, how am I going to do that? So the how is probably one of the biggest questions as well, right? We've got all these things and we still have to, do, we still have to contend with budget and all those other things. So how do we do that? All right. This depends on what kind of organization you are. And I'm going to do a lot of generalizing here. So uh, there are lots of different types of organizations. And as I went back to, I said there was, you know, types of business models, your specific organization, your industry, your region, all of those things play into it. But we're going to talk about three specific types of organizations because I'm going to generalize a whole lot. One is, as I said, the data rich organizations. Those are organizations where the number one thing that they have is their data. That might be proprietary information uh, or whatever, what have you. But whatever they do, that data needs to be protected. Doesn't The platform itself doesn't matter. The hardware doesn't matter. But we need to protect that data. Then we have the asset rich environment. That is the environment where if they don't keep things running, doesn't matter if the data is transiting through or not, they don't keep the environment running, they can't do what they're going to do. Maybe those are industrial companies, production companies, many other things. And then we have organizations where both of those things are equally important, or at least important to the point where they both have to be considered. So I'm going to delve a little bit more into each one of those and kind of go through the steps of that uh, objectives, uh, what, how, et cetera. So from a data-rich perspective, and I'm actually taking this uh, out of some of the cases that I've worked on. 
Um, so uh, I have I have intimate knowledge of why these things are are important to each type of organization. So software development company. Uh, let's say that your company develops the brand new amazing game that everybody wants to play, and your your source code is possibly having been stolen by a threat actor and they're threatening to release it, which means your company is going to lose millions of dollars if your source code is released on the dark web or anywhere else. That is the worst case scenario for your organization. So objective wise, we're really going to be data heavy here. So we're going to think about, you know, what was taken. We want to understand what was taken so we can understand what that scope is. How much do we need to be concerned? Did they take a little bit? Do they have the whole the whole code repository? Um, and and then how did it happen? How did they get in? So that's a big one as well, right? Uh, because we want to make sure that that doesn't happen again. We want to make sure that we've stopped it from happening currently. And was there any back doors? All the things that we need to think about. Do they still have access to environment? Even if we say protect the code repository, are they coming back in? Do they have their claws in anywhere else? Um, how do we know that? And then who needs to know about this? When we think about an investigation, again, internally, externally, partners, legislators, uh, regulators, all of those things, who needs to know in this case? So this, this in this case might include customer data as well. So maybe that's an important point that we need to take into effect. So let's start thinking about that. Um, from my experience, and your mileage may vary, one of the best ways to figure out what left your environment is network data. Thank you, Phil Hagen, uh, for teaching me all about network data. The best way to understand what left your environment is PCAP. Um, and I and I see uh, Dan has asked a question, you know, half joking, has anyone ever had a client who PCAPs? Yes, but very rare, as I said. Uh, but it is obviously the number one really good way to say this left the environment because we've got source and destination, we've got we've got uh, uh, the actual packets, we've got uh, we've got times, all of those things wrapped up into a lovely, lovely PCAP packet um, to tell us all of the things. Unusual, perhaps, right? But network data is the best way for us to tell to 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 see that NetFlow if you can, right? Um, also, file and folder access, right? So who accessed what? Now, uh, you can do that in any number of ways. I'm not going to go into every single artifact, but um, being able to obviously interrogate systems and understand what sort of file folder access went on. There is commercial products out there that help you do that. There's also artifacts on the disk, obviously, that help you do that as well. Uh, we also might want to look at process execution. Um, was tools like, we see them very often, our clone, xcopy, uh, do we see anything like that? Um, any archiving software that looks like there might have been data staging? So all of those things we might want to we, we might want to, to to be looking at to collect. How about logs? A ton of logs might be interesting, right? Uh, DNS, for instance. Uh, uh, if you go back in time, DNS is one of my favorite things in the whole world, right? But DNS traffic tells us what uh, what domains were requested within our environment. Was it drop me files? Was it share file? Was it any number of shady, shady file sharing sites that we wouldn't normally use within our environment that we might want to know about that was, you know, used at a particular time? Um, I'll give you an example, actually, from a from a case that I worked. Um, they were keeping all of their process execution events. Awesome, uh, but uh, no one noticed. Apparently, the monitoring wasn't as good. No one noticed that uh, that somebody had been using uh, XCopy and our clone. On, on servers, bad, bad, bad. But also nobody noticed that those same servers that were using our clone also had uh, uploads to Mega. So file, file transfer software to a file transfer site on multiple servers over time, they had the information and they didn't use it. That's a whole other question. That's a whole other problem, unfortunately. But those are the kinds of, of evidence that are gonna help us get to that. So those are the things that those are the things that we want to be looking at. Those that's the what. Now the how is how long do we have to have it? So again, that is going to be based on a number of things for your organization. We have customer data. Um, we maybe want to keeping a little bit longer to make sure that we understand, you know, what's been gone. Um, and also 
how will we collect it, right? So do we have somewhere to store all this information? Do we have a syslog? Do we have a seam? And, 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 and where will we store it? Will we decentralize it? Will it be somewhere, you know, will it be somewhere centrally? Let's see. Um, and last but not least, um, how long do we need it for, right? So um, how long do we keep it for? And I think I missed the first one, which is how long do we have? Notification wise, from a customer perspective, how long do we have until we have to notify folks? We have to be, you know, have to have that rush. So all of those things we have to think about from a data rich perspective. But those are some of the things that I would think about um, if you were talking about a data rich environment. All right. Uh, this should say asset rich, and I obviously have screwed up my slide. This should be asset rich. Manufacturers. So I worked a case a few years ago uh, for a company that um, has very hot ovens, essentially, that make their product. And I asked them, how long would it take you to recover if those were hard down? Think about a Stuxnet type event where perhaps a threat actor was able to uh, compromise the software that ran uh, that ran your heavy duty equipment. Um, and they said it would take three weeks to cool the ovens down. So once they were affected, those ovens would take three weeks to cool down. And then it would take another three to four weeks once they fixed everything to heat them up again. So they were going to be down minimum for six to seven weeks if something like this happened. And they would not be able to ship product, which they did on a daily basis around the world. And that would have been devastating to them as a company. So think about that from the perspective of if a threat actor hits you with ransomware and all your systems are hard down, perhaps a Stuxnet type event where uh, your actual means of making the things that you do uh, are not able to run. And so their biggest objective was getting back up and running. But at the time, they had no idea that that could actually do it. So again, they're also going to want to know, how did it happen? Uh, they also want to know, you know, was there any lateral movement? Are they anywhere else in the environment that we need to know about? And what else did they do? They brought us hard down, but what else did they do? So number one for this type of organization for me is a critical asset list. And that includes things like not only what the systems are, but who their owners are what data is stored on them, what software is on those, how do we bring them back up? So the recovery priorities, what order do we have to bring stuff in? If you think about something like industrial ovens, there may be a specific order that things have to be brought back up in. So those are all those things that we would need to know, uh, but also logs, right? So logs are all the things, right? What happened on those systems? Um, what sort of, uh, what sort of uh, actions happen, process execution? Uh, the network data. So was anything was anything exfiltrated? Interesting, but more interesting, what came in? Where did they go? Where did they come from? Um, and file and folder access, what did they touch? So there's a lot of repeat here. You're going to see that. Um, but again, it's just thinking about for your organization, how do we answer those objectives? The next part is how long can we be down for? And I talked about this with respect to, to the organization that I did the investigation with. How long could they be down? Um, they couldn't possibly be down that long, but that's how long they would be down, right? So yeah, I had to look at it at two different perspectives, which is we probably can't be down for more than a week, but if those ovens go down, we're going to be down for six weeks. So making a plan somewhere in between there um, is and understanding those limits is a really, really big thing. And what should we be recovering first? What servers need to be recovered first? Uh, is there a particular, you know, uh, way that they have to be done? Is there a particular order that they have to be done in? Um, what sort of, you know, how do we have the software available? All of these things need to be understood so we can meet that objective of getting back up and running. Then from the evidence perspective, again, we're going to answer those questions of how will we collect that data? Any of the logs, the network data, et cetera. How will we collect that data? Where are we going to store it? You'll notice there's a theme here. Um, and how long do we need it for? Um, in this particular situation, maybe we don't have PII, we don't have notifications to make to folks. Um, so maybe we don't have to keep it as long, but maybe there's some industrial regulations that say we have to keep a certain, a certain information that long. So those are the things that we need to know um, so that we can make that plan and ensure that we can uh, go backwards from that worst case scenario and get to that point of preparation where we feel good about the fact that if this worst case scenario happens, we'll be able to handle it. 
Last one. Wow, I'm really good at these slides. Asset and data rich healthcare provider. And I thought I went over these. So asset and data rich uh, healthcare providers are a really great example. And I kind of went over this a little bit, but we have two angles to look at for healthcare providers, obviously. One of those is, is basic patient care. And that probably trumps anything, right? Is if machines aren't running, then we can't do our job um, as, 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 as first responders. And let's face it, our first responders over the last few years have you know, saved our butts uh, any number of millions of times, unfortunately. Um, so if they can't do their job, then we're not safe as patients. Um, anyone who's done a healthcare a case knows that uh, systems in, in hospitals particularly are generally quite old. I myself, uh, a few years ago, ran into a hospital bed that was running Windows 2000 that was impacted with Conficker. Um, and, and that was just kind of floating around in the hospital. Uh, so we need to be worried about patient care, obviously, that's number one, but also um, if uh, there's patient data stolen, so if it's encrypted, if it's, if it's uh, stolen and they threaten to release it, that's a whole other ball of wax from a PR perspective, from a notification perspective. So those two things kind of ride side by side, although I would say that patient care probably is a little bit higher, obviously. So objectives, um, all of the things that we talked about, but specifically, the data notification perspective, what was taken, um, how much was taken and how was it taken, right? So how did, how did they get it out? How much was taken um, and, and what was taken? That what was taken is the hardest question for any incident responder to answer. Um, and as I said, thank you, Phil Hagen, network data trumps all in that perspective. Um, but additionally, from a data, from an objectives perspective, we're going to want to know, again, root cause, how did they get in? Um, what else have they done? So lateral movement, where are they persisting in the environment uh, to make sure that they're, they're not, no longer persisting there and that we can go back to, to normal operations? Are the patients safe, right? Are the systems now safe? Have we, have we properly evicted the threat actor? Have systems properly been remediated? All of those things are going to be objectives for a healthcare provider and all the things that we need to look at. So from what, again, this one's, this one's a tough one because it's kind of all the things. Um, network data, again, um, it's gonna be a tough one because we're gonna have that, we're gonna run up into that budget thing again. But when we look at that worst case scenario and we think about the questions that we're gonna have to answer, we kind of wanna prioritize again, the things that we need. And for me, um, things like network data, EDR, uh, and, uh, and uh, network data, EDR, and I'm losing my mind here, um, are the things that we want to talk about, the logging, sorry, and logging. So OS logging um, and, and in we do beyond default are the things that we want to know about uh, as much as we possibly can. So we can answer those questions, particularly around notification. Those are the things that the lawyers care about. So how do we balance those things? I think that's a really important question when we get to the how. Again, patient care tends to, at least in the immediate time, trumps anything else. Uh, and then we get into you know, the, the data. But we have to balance those things from a, from a budget perspective um, and understand what the most important thing is. How long do we need to keep things? All of those things still play in because now we're dealing with notifications, patients, actual people. So it's a really big question to have to answer. So the question is, how do we do all of that? And the answer, and I learned this at the feet of Rob Lee, is it depends. It depends on your organization. <coughs> it depends on the laws that you're subject to. It depends on what was taken, what kind of organization you are. Uh, I'm gonna go back to that over and over and over again. So the best thing that I have found is once you understand what your objectives are, <coughs> Once you understand what you need and, uh, and, and how you might do that, you need to get friends within your organization and beyond to help you make the case. So we have allied types for three organizations. And again, I'm generalizing quite a bit here, but you'll notice that the legal teams are big all the way across. Honestly, some of your best friends, internal counsel and external counsel for your organization are some of your best friends for when you're doing this. 
And the reason for that is, is because when you are uh, talking to organizations uh, and you say to a lawyer, this is our worst case scenario. And they go, it is our worst case scenario. In fact, I would have them sit with you and come up with your worst case scenario because they're going to know some ideas around what your worst case scenario may be more than what you thought of. A lot of times as technical folks, we tend to go to the technical thing as the worst case scenario. And maybe as an organization, the legal team or the privacy officer or even the CEO has some ideas about what their worst case scenario is and getting that input and understanding what that is, is a great idea. <coughs> if you've got those folks with you and say, this is our worst case scenario, and these are our objectives for that investigation. And you can say to them, here's how I'm gonna help you answer those objectives in the best way possible. And this is what I need. You will be much better uh, in, in place to get support to get those things happening again there's prioritization that needs to happen obviously but that kind of friendship within the organization will help you put those things in place <coughs> other things that you need to be aware of for friends obviously is in data rich environments we want to know who those data owners are they're very invested in protecting the data that belongs to them and their applications so they're good friends to have when we talk about data going missing data being damaged in an organization in an asset rich environment, you want to want to know who owns those assets, who keeps them up and running, who keeps the patient care data uh, system up and running, who keeps the, the respirators up and running in, in a hospital. All of those things, you want to know who owns those because they're going to be very invested in keeping the things that they run up and running. They're going to be good friends of yours. How about the sales folks for asset rich environments? If you are down for any long period of time, they're going to be able to say to you, I'm going to support you in any way I can to make sure that I make my quota, because if we can't, we, if we can't ship anything, then I'm not selling anything and I'm not making my quota and I'm not making my bonus. So I'm going to help you in any way possible to get you what you need. So I'm going to recap. The path to less dough. I think it's a good book title. I want you to think about what is your worst nightmare for your organization. What makes you sweat at night what makes the legal team in your organization think this is it we're done it's over have that conversation internally and if that happens what are your objectives what do you need to know who do you need to tell so if you have regulators that you need to talk to what are the things that they need to know if there's timelines that you need to meet what are those that you need to meet find out what your objectives are is it the data is it getting it up and running? Understand what that is. Understand what your limits are as an organization. And then what do you need to meet the objectives? What sources of evidence, information, uh, what sort of you know, uh, data do you need in place to help you meet those objectives, to answer the questions to your legal team, to your, to your executive, to your business partners, to law enforcement, to regulators? What do you need to meet those objectives? And then where can you collect what you need? So in your environment, when you have that list of what you need, where do you find it? Is it there? Does it even exist? If it doesn't exist, maybe figure out how it does. I'm gonna give you an example, default logging. Maybe that doesn't have what you need in it. Think about using, for instance, a Sysmon configuration to give you some more enriched logging. Uh, figure out if you're sending your firewall logs to an MSP, but they can only give you an hour at a time uh, to do any investigation. Maybe that's not right, the right, uh, the right uh, solution for you. Maybe it's something else. A lot of MSPs, uh, your mileage may vary, right? Some of them are great, some of them, eh. but um, I think you just have to think about those things, think about what you need and make sure you have it in place and ask those questions. And then how long do you need it for? Um, there is, again, school of thought, best practices, there's going to be regula regulations. PCI has a bunch of regulations around how long you need to keep things for. You need to understand for your organization, worst case scenario, how long do you need to keep things for? And then figure out where you're going to put those things. If you need a year of logs for certain things, you're going to need somewhere to put it, which means you need budget to, uh, to be able to do that. You need a place to store. You need a safe place to store. All of those things that you need to think about when you're putting your plan together.
And last but not least, I didn't add this in the rest of the organ in the rest of the presentation, but have you documented all the things, right? So you now know what your worst case scenario is. You've got your objectives that you've you've talked about with all the stakeholders. You know what you need, you know how long you need it, and you figured out where you're going to store it. And then you decide to move on to another company at some point. Did you write it down so that everybody else can continue doing it? I hope so. That is the last step. And, I, and at this point, I'm going to say, these are my dogs. This is Ruby and Annie. Um, they're the highlight of my life other than my wife. I want to say thank you so much uh, to the summit for having me again. Uh, I did drop an F-bomb in my talk on the last one. So I apologize for that. Um, and thank you for everybody for showing up. Um, I am so happy to be presenting again. And I hope everybody's having a great time either remotely or on site. And I hope to be there next year.